Hi guys, Cinematic Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain an American inspirational drama movie, called Collateral Beauty. A successful advertising executive, Howard Inlet, makes a speech in his office to cheer on all his employees. He says that in order to go through the day with enthusiasm, they should always remember three important concepts in life, namely love, time, and death, but in fact, Howard's spirits faded and he becomes clinically depressed after his young daughter's tragic death three years later. He mainly spends his time alone, rarely sleeping or eating, and also building domino chains and structures at his office. Therefore, Howard's estranged friends and business partners, Wit, Simon, and Claire are concerned about his health as well as their company's future. His behavior has cost them numerous high-profile clients and put the company on the verge of bankruptcy. Furthermore, Howard has also undermined their efforts to sell the company because he is the majority shareholder. To save the company, Witt devises a plan to remove him from the executive position. Simon and Claire initially refuse as they do not want to betray Howard, but with no other choice, they are forced to agree to Witt's plan. That night, Witt tells Simon and Claire that he has hired a private investigator to acquire evidence that Howard is unfit to run the company, allowing them to take control. At the same time, Howard has nightmares about his beloved daughter. After waking up, he writes down all his sorrows in several letters throughout the night. The following morning, he puts his letters in the mailbox, where the private investigator, Sally, comes there to intercept the letters. She then presents them to the trio, only to find that Howard wrote about the abstract concepts of love, time, and death. Later, Whit meets his daughter, Allison who lives with her mother after he cheated on his wife. Unfortunately, she refuses to spend the holiday with him because she is disappointed in his father for breaking his mother's heart. Afterwards, Wit, Simon, and Claire hire a trio of struggling actors, Amy, Raffi and Brigitte, to masquerade as the abstracts respectively in order to confront Howard about his letters. Brigitte is death, Amy is love, and Raffi is time. Wit believes that if Howard gets advices from these three concepts in reality, then his behavior can return back to normal, but if it does not work, their backup plan is for Sally to record these encounters and then digitally erase the actors to make Howard seem mentally unbalanced, allowing them to sell the company. Wit will also pay those around him to act as if they do not know the actor's presence except for Howard. After learning about the plan, the actors finally agree, but for a fee of $20,000 per person. The scene moves to Howard visiting a house where a grief support group is being held. People gather inside to tell their respective sad stories, but Howard only watches them from outside every night as he is still not ready to confide his story. With their preparations ready, the actors begin their act the next day, starting with Brigitte approaching Howard in a park. She introduces herself as Death, and then she gives him back the letter he sent for Death. Knowing that Howard is confused, she continues to reassure him that Death is real. Howard does not believe her at first, but suddenly, a woman walks past him, telling her son that Howard has gone crazy because he is talking to no one. Brigitte explains that in this world only himself can see and talk to Death. As a result, he gets scared and immediately leaves the place. At night, Howard finally attends the grief support group, where he befriends a woman named Madeline. She pacifies him by telling him that she has also lost her own daughter, Olivia to cancer, which led to the end of her marriage. After the session, Madeline asks Howard why he just decided to join tonight as she has seen him outside several times before, to which he replies that he came to fix his mind. She then says that it is the fact that her daughter died and it would never be fixed. Sometime later, Brigitte meets Simon to discuss Howard's current condition. At that time, she just realizes that he is actually sick. Inevitably, Simon confides with her that he has been battling cancer for years, but he has never told anyone about his illness and his fear of death, including his own family. Hence, Brigitte encourages him to share the burden with his family. When Howard arrives at his office, he encounters Raffi who introduces himself as time. Howard asks the boy not to mess with the domino structures, while asking him to leave. However, Raffi gives him back the letter he sent for time, containing all his anger towards time. After a while, Claire approaches Howard and asks him to attend the meeting, while Raffi assures him that no one can see time but himself. Raffi ultimately advises him that he should be grateful for the time he has been given instead of wasting it. During the break, Claire rebukes Raffi because she thinks his words were too much. Knowing that she is looking for a sperm donor to conceive a child, he advises her instead, saying that she has been wasting time after neglecting her private life for years. While Howard is eating at the restaurant, Amy suddenly comes up to him and introduces herself as love. Holding back tears, she says that Howard should accept the love within him to be able to live like he used to. However, Howard chooses to leave as he is sick of being constantly disturbed. 
After that, the group discuss the actors' performances, and they eventually agree to carry out their backup plan. However, Amy storms out of the room because she feels guilty about manipulating Howard. On the other hand, Howard sees Madeline again to tell her about his recent conversations with death, time, and love. She then says that they both have the same life, which was to be separated from their partners after their daughter died. She also shows him a note from her husband, if only we could be strangers again. And continues enigmatically and now we are. Their conversation continues in the restaurant, where Madeline tells him that on the day Olivia died, an elderly woman at the hospital had told her to notice the collateral beauty, which she has learned to recognize as acts of selfless kindness that follow tragedies. Since he thinks it unreasonable, Howard does not heed her words, instead he orders a taxi for her and leaves immediately. The following day, Wit goes with Amy to convince her to return and declares a romantic interest in her. Amy initially rejects him, but then agrees to commit to their plan if he wants to make amends with his daughter. Soon, the actors confront Howard again, starting with Raffi following behind him on a skateboard. Infuriated, Howard immediately stops and then throws his skateboard, telling him that he is very disappointed with time. Meanwhile, Sally is secretly recording the incident from afar. Howard then continues on his way home and meets Brigitte in the subway, where he frustratedly says that he does not believe in life as her daughter is not with him anymore. Lastly, he finally encounters Amy who is able to externalize the pain he held inside since his daughter's death by telling him that he owes his daughter's existence to love and that he cannot live without her. A few days later, Howard attends a meeting with his company's board of directors, where footage of the incidents with the actors digitally removed is shown. Howard falls silent in confusion, wondering if it was his own hallucination. While looking at the faces of his friends, he immediately realizes that they were the ones who hired the actors. Claire tearfully admits that they were forced to do this to save the company's future. Hearing that, Howard expresses his gratitude for all that his friends have done for him, making him realize that his mental state and behavior are ruining the company. It turns out that Howard has been aware of his friends' personal problems all along, so he also promises to be there in their times of need. Despite all that, he signs the documents placed before him to enable the sale of the agency. As they were motivated by Howard's words, Wit, Simon, and Claire decide to solve their own personal problem. Simon tells his wife about his health condition, and she comforts him. When Claire pays Raffi for his acting, she finally admits that time has caught up to her, but Raffi replies that her battle with time is not over yet, implying that she will be a good mother one day. Wit also visits Allison at school, and obviously she is still mad at her father. Even though she initially refuses to speak to him, he expresses his love for her and vows to return every day until she talks to him. Therefore, Allison reconsiders and mentions that tomorrow is a half day of school. Wit is happy to hear that and says that he will wait for her after school and then spend the day together. On Christmas Eve, Howard visits Madeline for the third time, where she persuades him to watch a video of her husband playing with their daughter. In the video, her husband turns out to be Howard, playing dominoes with their daughter. Howard bursts into tears and is finally able to acknowledge his daughter's name and cause of death. The two embraces in tears, finally accepting the reality of their daughter's death. In a flashback, it is also revealed that Brigitte was the woman who had told Madeline about the concept of collateral beauty. In the end, Howard and Madeline walk hand in hand through a park, where he turns and sees Amy, Raffi, and Brigitte watching him from a footbridge, but they eventually vanish as Madeline turns towards them. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.